topic we planned is to go with the AWS SDK. Last week we have seen AWS CLI way of automation. But today we talk about this AWS SDK. This comes handy if you are a developer in Java or Node.js, Python. We don't want to take the approach of CLA or the learning process of uh, uh, Terraform. That another place where SDK varies from Terraform or CLA is if you want to do any automation, let's say using Lambda to terminate an EC2 instance, update or clean up the S3 buckets. You would be using AWS SDK in your Lambda code. You would be triggering the event bridge to trigger that Lambda to perform the action. So any yeah. automation uh, in using Lambda that also the AWS SDK can uh, come handy. AWS SDK offered in multiple uh, languages. Here you see uh, one is uh, C++ it's offered. Also .NET, Go, JavaScript, Java, Kotlin, Python, Ruby and Rust and Swift. If you are not from a programming background, but if you still in demand to use SDK, generally as a beginner people go with Python or JavaScript. So we'll be using Node.js and within the Node.js we'll be using uh, JavaScript to execute your code. I prefer JavaScript over Python. The major difference would be that in Python, you can't achieve the asynchronous function, whereas uh, JavaScript, you can achieve the asynchronous function. So this Node.js, you can run it locally in your system. AWS made an update of JavaScript v3. Before it was v2 was there. And now they recently uh, made it into uh, v3. Still v2 is supported. And that's also a guide how you can move away from v2 into v3. Since you are learning a new, so I took the latest guide of v3. The major difference between V2 and V3 is, so for people who knows, so the node itself acts as a module. So module is more like a pre-written syntax and you just reuse it rather than writing it from the scratch. In version 2, you would need to import the entire SDK. So when I say entire SDK, let's say if your operation is to do only S3, but you would end up importing the entire AWS SDK which would consist of Lambda, EC2, and so on. Barrels with the new version 3, you can install a specific package for S3 and import only the required piece of operation. The concept remains same. If you have watched the previous video of the CLI, under each service, each would be consist of the list and get commands and what are the things you can automate it so that you can write a JavaScript code and then execute either locally or pipeline or run it in a form of Lambda if you're starting fresh. You go to this website and you would see how things would work. So if you see you are going to declare the service and then you are going to call as an asynchronous function and then whatever the actions you are going to do, you will be calling this part. So this is going to act as a generic syntax and just your service name and the call of action that would be varying. Let's talk about this one. Const is a variable which you can refer. So whichever says const followed by some X, Y, Z, it's a variable name. So when in this line, like when it's referred within the curly braces, it's a two variable, DynamoDB client and list tables command. And this variable will get stored. So it's a huge chunk of module, right? So from here, it will store the value of the DynamoDB client into this variable and list tables command into this variable. And here a new instance of class has been initiated. Also, you can control the region based on your credentials configured, like what region you want to execute the command. So let's say it's the same snippet. You have EC2 in US East 1 and maybe Lambda is running in a different one or secrets is stored in a different region. Then you can specify for each service which you're going to run the code. You can specify the region when calling the specific function. Any JavaScript file, you generally run it with .js extension. So first thing they're asking us to install the S3 bucket npm thing. So let's do that. And you see the installation has been done. So prerequisite people like you need to install the Node.js, which is already available in JS, and that would be like comes handy. So once the specific S3 or what service you want to install it, that specific part, and then you search for the action you want to do. So let's say if I want to list all the bucket command. So you go here, click that one, and AWS offers you the clear instruction how to user specific command or syntax. So in this case, if you see, you have a import S3 bucket and then the entire piece is over here. So let me copy this and let me paste the generic syntax. This is something that gets tricky. So here they mentioned config, right? The config here is, you need to pass the configuration of your credentials, which region you want to do 
or any specific thing you want to mention. For example, if I do a AWS config in terminal, it would ask for certain details, right? It asks for SSK ID, secret key, it asks for default region. So if you want to change a default region from US East 1 into a separate region you want to execute the query, then within the configuration, you would pass the respective value of a region so that those things get executed accordingly. So that's where the configuration part goes into picture. You can ask me, how do I know that? That's where the introduction, you should always start with the introduction on building any documentation. And here they have given an example how it would look like. So you always take a getting started guide as a reference and then you go to the documentation and it will make your life more easy. For instance, what I'm doing is I just copied getting started and I'm going to compare what is what. So the first line is talking about keeping the const as this value. This is for DynamoDB, but we want S3 as a client. And they're not talking about import. So I will comment this import line. I'm not going much detail about no, uh, Node.js. It's more about the introduction part of SDK itself. And then here we are going with an asynchronous function. And then we also need to do the end part, which would be this thing. We would need to just fill the required information between the asynchronous function. So we would need to do the client part. The client part has been added. Now we are calling the comment part. So which would be this. Try and catch this. You try to perform an action. And uh, if that is success, the duplicate executed. In case if the operation is failing, you have to time out or uh, some error. Rather than exiting with an exit code, it will give you the error message. So it's easy to troubleshoot. We are going to call the S3 API call and we can print the response over here. If I save this and to execute that Node.js, first you want to initialize the Node package. So for that you would do npm i and then the file name. So in, the, in our case, it would be test.js. So what it's going to do is, it's going to initialize the package for us. So if I do, it's added one package and it generally looks for the JSON and ask you for the details. So now you can try executing the command. To do that, you do node followed by the uh, file name. So then it runs it and it gives you a output of it. So basically now what it given us, it given us what are all the detail available as part of my account. So since it's a JavaScript, it also makes our life more easy to query, let's say, I just need the bucket details. So what I can do here is the metadata and buckets part. So let's say I need only the buckets part here, right? So generally this would be the starting phase. Anything at the first level. So in this case, metadata is the first level and buckets is in the first level. So what you can do is you can read with the value stored followed by dot and then the name of the thing which you're looking for. Let's say I want only the buckets. So what I can do, I can go to my code rather than saying response, I can say dot and then buckets. Okay. So now if I read on the same thing, you would see the difference. All I get is just the buckets. Okay, so now this anything into square brackets that enter in terms of array. So array always start with number 0, 1, 2, likewise. So since here it's just a, a single one, it's just having a single one. So if I want to go deep into it, I don't need this key UI. I can do off 0 so that it's just going to list me what are the characteristics inside the when I do like off zero, what's happening here is it's just printing the initial part of it, right? So let's say if I want all the name field, you would start introducing the looping part, which can be like a bit advanced, but how would you do here is you would say for, let's say, bucket response. It's all about like coding because the ideal expectation is like you are already uh, good at coding, right? That's why you are going to choose this one. And here you can come and then say, for troubleshooting, you can go for console. Try to use as much console.log. If you're not aware about like what's happening, that's the, you know, best place to go. So if you do it, then now you can see you are getting the value for this line, the console.log as expected, which is a full detail. It's not just happening for buckets. So now you can know like I need to add buckets over here. So if I do dot buckets, if I do this one buckets, and if I do a node test.js, now we still see 
we are getting undefined undefined so let's see what's happening now let's try to print the bucket itself and i will comment it out so so what's happening now is it's adding as an array part so 0 1 2 3 what we can do is buckets of bucket this will convert one of the numbers into the array one and it should start printing it so let's try doing it now you see now we got the value for it if you want just the name part now we would go with of bucket and then you fetch the specific value and if you do node test.js you got just the bucket name. 